Sixth week of Easter, 5 12 23, the coming of the Holy Spirit, 1 30 p.m. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to a very steamy day in Connecticut. Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. We will do the prelude, intro, and get started. Prelude is for God so loved the world.
Yes, God did love the world. He gave his only son. And good afternoon, once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. And here are your announcements for today. The next train trip is to D.C. on since 8. Fenway coming soon. The semester is over. And there's a train day festival in Kingston, Rhode Island tomorrow from 2 to 7. And we will be there for it. So it is the sixth week of Easter. And it is the coming of the Holy Spirit. We are getting closer to Ascension. So now is the time where they realize that he was still there and we can use the book of Acts to sort of figure out what happened as we got closer to when he would be ascended to the Father. Anything else? No? So receive the call to worship. Live in God's love. Let that love be poured out for all God's people. Bring hope and peace to all whom you meet. We are called to be God's witnesses. Celebrate and rejoice. Praise be to God who has called, healed, and given us a ministry of peace. Amen. And you please rise and say with me, open in him, 292, thou didst leave thy throne. This leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming thy royal decree. But of lowly birth didst thou come to earth, and in great humility. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The fox is from rest, and the birds their nest in the kind of the forest tree. But thy couch was the sun, O thou son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Thou camest, O Lord, with the living word that should set thy people free. But with mock and scorn and with crown of thorn, they bore thee to Calvary. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The heavens shall reign, and the angels sing at thy coming to victory. Let thy voice call me home, saying, Yet there is room, there is room at my side for thee. My heart shall rejoice, Lord Jesus, when thou comest and callest for me. Lord, this afternoon we come before you, knowing that you left your throne for us. There are so many times in our lives where we feel alone. We wonder where you are. We cry out to you in our confusion, hurt, and pain. Help us look around and find the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. 
Forgive us when we are so quick to doubt and so arrogant in our demands of your responses. Give us a spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministry of love and hope that you have placed before us as all creatures of as all creatures of your of you this day and every day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All creatures of our God and King, since the three. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, over in sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh praise him, oh praise him, Alleluia, Hallelujah! How rushing when men aren't so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven alone. Oh, praise Him! Hallelujah! Thou rising morning, praise rejoice! Ye lights of evening, find a voice. Oh, praise Him! Oh, praise Him! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. With water pure and clear, make music for thy Lord to hear. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thou fire so masterful and bright, thou givest man both warmth and light. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And all ye men of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Oh, sing ye, hallelujah, ye who on pain and sorrow bear. Praise God and on him cast your care. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let all things visit him. Let all things that create our blood. And worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Father. Praise the Son. And praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. 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 All right, very pretty. And the anthem is Let There Be Worship and Let There Be Praise.
Offertory is the Holy Spirit. Please subscribe and continue to check out some of my other videos as well. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, there's always time for worship and there's always time for praise as you gave your holy heart for us. So take these gifts and multiply and make, make yourself known throughout the world as we have made it to the end of the spring semester and we look forward to see what the summer has in store. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. All right, so the reading today is Acts 10, 1 to 29, and we're going to look at vulnerability in relationship. What does the term stuck up actually mean? There was a man named Cornelius who lived in Caesarea, captain of the Italian guard stationed, here, stationed there. He was a thoroughly good man, he had led everyone in his house to live worshipfully before him, before God. He was always helping people in need. And led the habit of prayer. One day, about three o'clock in the afternoon, he had a vision. An angel of God, as real as his next door neighbor, came in and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared hard, wondering if he was seeing things. Then he said, What do you want, sir? The angel said, Your prayers and neighborly acts have brought you to God's attention. Here's what you are to do. Send man to Joba to get Simon, the one that everyone calls Peter. He is staying with Simon the tanner, whose home is down by the sea. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two servants and one particularly devoted soldier from the guard. He went over with them in great detail everything that had just happened. And then they sent him off to Joppa. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. Vulnerability in relationships means that sometimes we leave ourselves exposed to certain things. Like... Throughout this week, there's been kind of this back and forth between myself and someone else. And saying that we are stuck up, think about what that means. If someone is stuck up, that means they are aloof to others and they think they have high superiority over everyone. Well, that is not true. That is a false statement. And the reason why is because if I was stuck up, one, these services would not come to life. Two, two, I don't think a stuck up person would have sent him an Easter card or, you know, check in on him, make sure he was okay. And three, it was just an unnecessary ugly comment. It was an ugly comment. Here we are. Trying to figure out, okay, now that the semester is over, okay, what am I going to do for the next three months? But, you see, the thing is, guys, you're going to run into people like this. When they only want you for your possessions, or they only want you for your money or things like that. And this is not what we wanted here. Is it because we tried so hard to figure out, you know, 
how we were going to make amends with somebody, how are we going to show them that we changed and things were better. But the reality is people just don't allow us to show them that, you know what, this is how we were then, this is how we are now. The next day, as the three travelers were approaching the town, Peter went out to the balcony to pray. It was about noon. Peter got hungry and started thinking about lunch. While lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the skies open up. Something that looked like a huge blanket lowered by ropes at its four corners, settled on the ground. Every kind of animal and reptile and bird you could think of was on it. Then a voice came. Go to it, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter said, Oh no, Lord. I've never so much as tasted food that was not kosher. The voice came a second time. If God says it's okay, it's okay. This happened three times. And then the blanket was pulled back up into the sky. Now let's break this down. So He's fallen into a trance. He's thinking about lunch. He's thinking, like, you know, what can I have? What am I going to have for lunch? It's good because we're going to have that up next. But then he falls into a trance of where he's seeing a blanket like this. Obviously, it did not say Patriots on it. But he's seeing a blanket fall to the ground. It's almost like a picnic blanket where he sees every kind of animal, reptile, bird you could think of. And when God is telling them it's okay to kill, it's okay to eat. Now think about that. That's another part of this. Being vulnerable to do things that we might think is not right. Do I think it's okay for somebody to go get wasted and, you know, to just go off and do their own and just go off and do illegal activities? No. No, because just because I think it's not thinks it's not a healthy way of living and it's not a good idea, that doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't think it is a good idea. As Peter puzzled, sat there trying to figure out what it all meant, the man, the men sent by Cornelius showed up at Simon's front door. They called in, asking if there was a Simon, also called Peter. Staying there, Peter lost his thought, didn't hear him. So the spirit whispered him, three men are knocking at the door, looking for you. Get down there and go with them. Don't ask any questions. I sent them to get you. Peter went down and said to the men, I think I'm the man you're looking for. What's up? They said, Captain Cornelius, a God-fearing man, well known for his fair play, asked any Jew in this part of the country, was commanded by a holy angel to get you and bring you to his house so he could hear what you had to say. Peter invited them in and made them feel at home. See, this will happen, guys. In, the, in every early stage of every relationship, you will feel you will, you will feel welcome and make yourself at home. But as we have seen so many times here, people will see kindness for weakness. People will see the kindness in us, and then they will take advantage of that. Because they know, because they might think that we might, sit, might think that everything is yes. Well, not everything is yes. There are certain things that have to be no. Because people like this. Like what we just read. You know, these guys just show up at his door and, and, and wanting to talk to him about everything. See, we think we are doing the right thing by coming back and reevaluating and fixing a situation. But the fact is, 
not a lot, you know, a lot of people just don't want to fix a situation or they think they did nothing wrong. The next morning, he got up and went with them. Some of his friends from Joppa went along. A day later, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had his relatives and close friends waiting with him. The minute Peter came through the door, Cornelius was up on his feet greeting him and then down on his face worshiping him. Peter pulled him up and said, None of that. I'm a man and only a man no different from you. Talking things over, they went on. They went on into the house where Cornelius introduced Peter to everyone who had come. Peter addressed them. You know, I'm sure that this is highly irregular. Jews just don't do this, visit and relax with people of another race. But God has just shown me that no race is better than any other. So the minute I was sent for, I came. No questions asked. But now I'd like to know why you sent for me. You see, this is, this is another thing, too, we have to think about. Because God plays no favorites. We can't play favorites. We have to think of everybody as equal. As I've said so many times, if you're on all those apps out there, you, are, you all are out for one thing. It doesn't matter if the person is not your type or whatever. You're not going to marry them. You're not going to have a relationship with them. You're just going to go do what you got to do, and then 10 minutes later, gone. This may be where stuff up comes into play. Because people on that on those apps are very stuck up. Number one. Number two, they don't answer you a lot of times. See, this is Peter's vision. This is what he's telling us. He's saying to us, this is what he's this is what he finds weird. Number one, he finds people at his door, people that he's never met. Oops. Cornelius said four days ago, at about this time, mid afternoon, I was home praying. Suddenly, there was a man right in front of me, flooding the room with light. He said, Cornelius, your daily prayer is neighborly, neighborly asked and brought you to God's attention. I want you to send to Joppa to get Simon, the one they call Peter. He's staying with Simon the Tanner by the sea. So I did it. I sent for you. And you've been good enough to come. And now we're all here in God's presence, ready to listen to whatever the master put in your heart to tell us. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere among everyone. You know the story of what happened in Judea? It began in Galilee after John preached and total life changed. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. He went through the country, helping people and healing everyone who was beaten by the devil. He was able to do it all because God was with him. Yes, this is what we are talking about. If we have an interest in somebody and we want to show them that that things are different than what they were before, because God is with us. This is Jesus shining his light in me, saying, look, saying, go, set it right with people. 
even if they don't want to set it right with us, if we feel in our hearts that we have have an obligation to actually show that we are not stuck up or ways or ways that people think we are, then this is what he's talking about here. And we saw it, saw it all, everything he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, where they killed him, hung him from a cross. But in three days, God had him up alive and out where he could be seen. Not everyone saw him. He wasn't put on public display. Okay. Now, he was put on public display when he was crucified. Because usually from what we've seen in movies and reenact from what I've seen in movies and reenactments, people that were crucified were left out in public. So if somebody was walking by, they could see him being hung from a, from the cross. But after his but after he was raised up, he wasn't put on public display. As we hear Mr. Willie go by. Witnesses have been clearly carefully handpicked by God beforehand. Us. We were the ones there to eat and drink with him after he came back from the dead. He commissioned us to announce this to the announce this in public. To bear solemn witness that he is in fact the one whom God doesn't as judge of the living and dead. He, but we're not alone in this. Our witness that he is the means to forgiveness of sins is backed up by the witnesses of all the prophets. Here is the reading of a guy the blessing to the reading of these holy books. So that was Acts 10, 1, 2, 43. And we'll look at the rest of that next week. See, this is not being stuck up. This is not... This is just having a vision in our minds of thinking what... Thinking about... What could happen? Remember, actions speak louder than words. Sometimes people just say those things to us and then, then their actions say something else. Vulnerability in relationships happens all the time. We leave ourselves exposed to something like this. To be to be classified, to be identified as something that is not true. It's not true at all. Jesus did all of this for us. He wasn't stuck up. And in this class, maybe maybe I did act a little stuck up. Because I went through a phase of thinking that I was better than the instructor, thinking that I was thinking that I was something that I wasn't. But now but here we are at the end, knowing that if we didn't do that and if we just went along with it, we'd have been better off. And we cannot blame our significant others. We cannot blame outside people for the things that occur in the classroom. I'm going to read to you what somebody said about what we're talking about here.
So this psychologist named Mark, Mark Manson wrote an article on what vulnerability really is. A lot of people, especially those who spent their entire lives covering up their emotions, have a hard time knowing exactly what vulnerability is. It's understandable. A lot of behaviors that might look like displays of vulnerability on the surface are actually incredibly manipulative and are needy, i.e. the opposite of being vulnerable. We'll get to those soon. But first, I want to be clear about what genuine vulnerability is. Vulnerability is constantly choosing to not hide your emotions or desires from others. That's it. You just freely express your thoughts, feelings, desires, and opinions regardless of what others might think of you. So, I've heard this on the train a lot, and I'm sure you guys have too. It's people, people just let it all out. You, you could be sitting on the train. You could be sitting in the lobby waiting to go. Or you could be sitting in the airport. You could be sitting in the terminal. This can be as simple as compliment someone on how good they look, approaching an attractive stranger you don't know, establishing clear and strong boundaries, or expressing your undying love to someone. I think this is what Brian was getting at here. I think we're showing this undying love that we have for him still, even though a relationship with him is a little un is unrealistic at the moment. Interesting, huh? It means putting yourself in a position where you can be rejected, saying a joke that might not be funny, asserting an opinion that may offend others, joining the table of people you don't know, telling someone you're attracted to them. Now, that's a bit weird. Now, that's very odd behavior, socially unacceptable, especially to people you don't know. Vulnerability is not a tactic. Emotional vomit. That could be the time where I didn't hear from him all day and ended up vomiting it in the driveway. Because we get ourselves so worked up and thinking that they don't love us, thinking that we can't be loved, thinking that everybody that Everybody we meet only wants to be friends with us. Well, I tell you one thing, not everybody does. Not everybody in this world does might want to establish a relationship with us. As I've talked about all along, relationship is a very strong word. It's a it's a word that has many meanings. In access. Yeah. In access, there are relationships between tables, relationship reports, databases all have relationships with each other. Your Amazon database, Walmart database, whoever. This is a, what this is, guys. Peter's vision is a vision that I had when Brian when, when I sent Brian that Easter card. It was a vision of thinking that you know what? We're gonna send him a card. We're gonna go see him, and then everything will be everything will be right again. That everything will everything will just go back to two three two ten and two seventeen. Well, no. That does sometimes that does not always go out in our favor. Can we be loved? Yes. But we have to figure out in, mentally in our minds where exactly did we go wrong? Sitting, standing on the balcony, he sees, he sees 
a blanket come down. He sees everything just pull out right in front of him. Kind of like how he saw Jesus being crucified on the cross when he was raised up from the dead. This is the coming of the Holy Spirit. This is God coming to us and reminding us reminding us that he is here with us and through us in every situation. And we're going to look more about that vulnerability in relationship next week. Amen. First song is Oh How He Loves You and Me. Lord, this afternoon we come before you, sometimes being vulnerable to everybody. With the need to feel loved and the need to have somebody in our lives can be overwhelming. When we come off as needy or just wanting something that might be unreasonable at this moment. But what is not unreasonable is our relationship with you. You created each and every one of us. You are alive even now. Through these weeks of Easter, we have seen the work that you are that you have shown to us. But the reality is that sometimes people don't want us around. And throughout this this summer we can we are given an opportunity to show people that what we have worked on and things that we have changed about ourselves. As you play no favorites. We thank you for helping us get through this semester. We pray that the job continues on this summer and especially in the fall. The job has opened up a lot of windows in the last two years. Having a new car, a new Wilbur on the way. We continue to pray for Charlie and Wario. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. But to this end, we want to show the world that we are not stuck up. Prove everybody wrong so they can see the good side of us 
and show the achievements and the success we have had this semester. In these last several weeks where things have gone right, show that to those who have doubted us. And like Peter, sometimes it is like a blanket that falls out of the sky where we can see everything right in front of us. We know you played no favorites, and we know that somebody will come. Someone will come and be right for us. But in the meantime, we are praying for a new Boston first and see what the summer brings. As it is in that prayer that you saw us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in him as Spirit of God. 21-17. Spirit of God, bright wind, breathe of his life, begin, blow as you always do. Lead us anew. Give us the breath to sing. Lift it on soaring wing. Held in your hands. Born on your wings. Hallelujah. Conspiracy. Alleluia, come Spirit, come. Spirit of God, bright head, men in far off land, bloom and race with one warm embrace. No matter where we go, you hold us together, so held in your hands, born on your ways. Alleluia, come, Spirit, come, Alleluia. Come, Spirit, come. Spirit of God in all 
all, we gladly hear your call. Life in your hands that save the power of your way. Born of your grace, we rise. Love shining in our eyes, held in your hands. Born on your way. Alleluia, come, Spirit, come. Alleluia, come, Spirit, come. We declare the name of the Lamb once The Lamb once slain, Christ eternal. You are hung down, you declared on me. Christ eternal, the King of kings, turn on the King of... 